Good evening and welcome to another video in the Artful Coder series. This is the series on clean architecture. Tonight we're going to look at the infrastructure layer which is quite simple compared to what we've been not so involved with probably what we've been doing so far. So the infrastructure layer is where the connection to the data it will handle the database interaction. So in our previous video we created our application layer uh, which has a interface of cars db context and in our infrastructure layer we're going to expand on this so then we'll build up our web api so even if we're at the end of it we get our web api to um, add a car to a table in a sql database that's what we plan to do so we'll just do that and then we can expand it, add, add validation, expand out as we go. So what we're going to do is right click on your solution, add new project, and it's going to be a class library again. So all three of these so far are class libraries. Go find your top level solution. You see we've got the two in there. Let's go to top folder. And we're going to call this was.infer. Structure, structure, do apply infrastructure, and okay. So, next at the time recording, we have dot net seven, and this is it. So, we're going to delete our bit there, delete, and this will add into this solution as we go. So, one of them is similar to what we did up here. So, so we have an interface. We need the end framework core. So let's go and add these dependencies now. Let's go to new package manager. It's going to try and suggest what we've already had. Let's go to browse. Go to second. So it already knows there. So you've got here, you've got SQL Service. Let's add entry framework. And because the later versions are more for .NET 8, we're going to choose 7.16 because we're for .NET 7. Click install, apply, accept, and then we're going to do the same with SQL Server version. Install, apply, accept, and then the tools as well. 7, install, apply, accept. Okay, so now what you can see is under our packages we have our entity framework. The next thing we need to do is add a couple of project references. Because infrastructure handles connections to the database, it needs to know about the interface in the application layer and also the actual models inside the domain layer. So if we go to add project reference and we just go to take the two options there. So we've got the two there, click OK. And that is now all of our referencing done. So next we're going to create some folders. So this is core, and we're going to have, let's create a new folder called DB Contacts there. And we're going to create that, and we're going to do that. So we're going to have a class in here, add class, and we're going to call this cars DB contacts.cs and click add. So what is this going to inherit from? So when we use framework tools to create our database, add cars to it, it needs to know about our interface. So we do by cars and it's going to suggest we bring it in, which we've done. So it's a very simple DB set we've got. So let's create DB set of type R and call this Rs. And what we're going to do is we're going to initialize this. What we're going to do is get, we're going to initialize this do a get in a set and it can't find car because we need to bring it in so using cars dot domain 
got art models got cars. There you go. And the only thing you're going to do is add the on model creating method. So protected, protected, over, right, void, on, model, creating. And we're going to bring in the model builder, builder, there. And this is just going to say base dot on. Oh, it's not working now. On. Okay, so we've got the framework there. And we need system dot reflection. And we're going to do, uh, so we've got our eye context there. So we're going to do on model creating base dot. So it's not recognize it, what we're missing. So we've got base builder on I'm going to call that there and pass in builder. Okay, so it's not liking something here. Ah, we also need, because this is our DB context, is we need to do Yes, so we're going to do that in our DB context in, in there. Okay, so we've got our own moment, so it's detected that. Okay, so it's not working that, is it? Ah, wait a minute, because it is a type of DB context. So what we need to do is make sure that our cars DB context extends DB context let's just get rid of that DB context that right in there so it has to extend our DB context so it's not like on our save changes async so that's going to pass that in there. It doesn't implement that. So let's have a look and go into that. Okay, so we're going to pass that out there. Application DB context. And then we don't implement the async method. So let's just have a quick look. And yes, so let's have a look. So complainers because it's not public so in our interface we need to set this as public I do miss up I do apologize okay okay so we have save that save that cards because it is not public okay so public there you go. So that is our DB context setup. So the next thing we need to do is, as with this one, we're going to create another one of these to make it sim easy to follow. So do add class and call this configure services.cs. Add. There you go. So what is this referring to? So we're going to go back up here and we're going to do, let's keep it simple. Yes, you could use guard class and all, but I just want to keep it simple. So I don't want to confuse people at this stage and just put extra. So I want to get the basics done. So let's 
go with Microsoft dot extensions dot dependency injection and the class also needs to be public static static class and we're going to call this dependency injection so we can copy it from there and we're going to have a public static by service collection and this is going to be add in the structure structure services and we're going to say this yeah and the other thing we're going to put in here is by on configuration by configuration and configuration and what it's going to return is services return services and I think we do a couple of things in here so we need to actually link our interface to our contacts so we're going to need a connection string so this is why we tell where the database exists in the cloud this is our way into it if you like so you'd have you in your web api you have your json and you have your configuration so let's create a new one called on equals configuration configuration dot get connection string and call this pass db connection okay so we've got a connection there the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say services and we're going to add services dot add db context and it's a type of there so we're passing our options that's how we do it so we're going to say cars db context and we're going to then do this do and say sp uh, options down to there and we're going to put equals that let's just get some parentheses in here do that and do that and that and then what we're going to do is we're going to take that out there because it's tried to type type it and then what we're going to say is options dot use SQL server which is passing con so then the only other thing we need to do is for dependency injection is link an interface from application layer so then that will then so if we go to services dot we do it scoped um, Let's add a scope to this. Add scope because there's different ways you can do this. So you can, so we're going to add i cars db context. And because we already have this, we don't want to get it again. So we're going to call it provider. Provider dot get required service of type cars db context so that is effectively our infrastructure layer built so what i mean by that is we've got our it's this is what i mean it's, it's simple compared to the other layers we've done so predominantly you would have your DB sets in there, our model creator going to override that, and you're going to have you can add infrastructure services as well. So, this is just some classes. So, that is pretty much it. So, you've just got entity framework, use SQL Server tools, 
you've got a couple of project references application domain you've got your DB context configure services and that is all there is so I hope you've enjoyed this video and keep tuned for the next video which is going to be web API so we're actually create an API purely just for doing our one use case and then we'll do some more videos and expanding this out so we can have a full crud using clean architecture and then we'll put a web blazy UI on top of it just so that we can see it all interconnecting and we may put some unit tests in there as well because you're going to want to test your application before in before you deploy it so again that is a very good video so thank you so much for watching